Hello, I'm Roberto Pestana, medical oncologist at Hospital Israelita Albert Einstein, and I'm here at our booth at the ASCO Annual Meeting 2024 to speak with Vanessa Teich, our Director of Oncology, and Dr. Adeshek, a medical oncology focusing on precision medicine and early phase trials about some important issues in uh, clinical trial access and access to new therapies for patients with rare cancers. So I'm going to start with you, Dr. Adeshek. Uh, you have some very interesting work in terms of novel designs for clinical trials, N of one trials, and also, you know, innovative ways to run these clinical trials with decentralized trials, which you, you actually presented yesterday. So why don't you comment to us a little bit about that? Sure, my name is uh, Dr. Jacob Adeshak. I'm a medical oncology fellow at Johns Hopkins and soon to be a phase one trialist at the START Center in San Antonio. And uh, I think you touch on a very important point is how do you run precision oncology trials? And I think the work that we've done previously in you know years past was getting N of one studies where you know you molecularly target specific patients alterations rather than just um, kind of broad-based you know clinical trials of the past of you know finding superiority and then within those subsets looking at you know basic matching scores or how many different drugs are targeted to these alterations that the patients have to try to you know improve their outcomes and we've done that in UCSD there's an ongoing study now in, in the Medical College of Wisconsin um, and those were studies that were on the ground. And then what we presented yesterday was a study that is a, a, the world's first decentralized uh, molecular tumor board based study. That's an interventional study where we do the same molecular profiling um, and then get those drugs to patients wherever they are in the United States. That's, that's very good. And, and what's your view on the importance of clinical trials in the patient journey, especially now with precision medicine, and, and also a little bit more of how this decentralized program can help equitable access to clinical trials? I mean, what, what's been your experience? Right. I think, you know, historically, people have looked at clinical trials as the last resort, as the last option. Um, but what we're seeing is the drugs are becoming so much better than what they previously were that, you know, people are getting clinical trials in the frontline setting and having, you know, great outcomes. So I think having access to clinical trials is of utmost importance for patients. I think that's extremely important that they have access to, you know, standard of care, but also clinical trials because you, you ne don't necessarily know, you know, what, what may be better than standard of care. I think that's important. I think you touched on another very important point is, uh, you know, decentralized trial, getting access to try these different trials. You know, I think what we've shown in, and we've talked about some of the work is, you know, looking at these studies that are either decentralized, so patients accruing from home, or some of these massive site accruals like the, the DART study, which the rare tumor study with the SWOG 1609, where there were over a thousand sites accruing patients. So I think having some, you know, being flexible and being able to either, you know, having organizations that can accrue patients from their home or having, you know, liberal inclusion criteria that patients can get in, you know, wherever they are. Yeah, yeah. And Vanessa, you know, we, we live, of course, in a very different setting than, than here in the U.S. And uh, incorporating these new technologies, once the trials are positive and we see these early signals, is very challenging. Yeah? I know this is one of your areas of expertise. So what's your view on these, on the ways we have to incorporate these, both in the public and private systems, and to, you know, guarantee affordability of these new drugs and these new technologies. Yeah, it's really a challenge for countries like Brazil that don't have that much money as in the U.S. And, and I think it's becoming, we're kind of coming to a point that in that even the U.S. is discussing affordability for some advanced therapies. So it's really a challenge for the world in general. But I think for Brazil, especially because we have such a big difference in access to technologies in the public, in the private system, we have a fixed budget for healthcare. We have to think of new ways to bring that, those technologies earlier to, to the patients. And I think one way to do that is really through clinical trials. Because for example, in Brazil, in the public system, in some studies, the standard of care is better than what we already can offer to patients. So it's really a way to provide better care, earlier access to technologies, physicians having the experience with those technologies, and even providing data to help support 
incorporation of those technologies. And what I think is really important for a country with such a limited budget is that we make sure that the right patients get those treatments. And for that, you need information. We need to train physicians to get to better know the disease, the indications, so that we make sure that the patients that benefit most will get those therapies. For sure. And we, we actually have um, an online abstract here at ASCO looking at the incorporation of uh, novel technologies specifically for rare cancers, for sarcomas, which is my area of interest. And what you see is that in the past 15 years, uh, 19 drugs have been approved in the U.S. for sarcomas. I mean, we included the agnostic approvals because patients with sarcoma can benefit from them, right? And in the same time period, only six drugs have been approved in Brazil. So only a third. Even the drugs that were approved, they were approved three years later in Brazil. So a lot of, you know, there's a gap in terms of drugs and in terms of time to, to have this. So um, question for both of you. First, uh, for Jacob, I mean, Dr. Adeshek, uh, so how, what's your view on the, how can we design clinical trials to lead for approvals for these very rare cancers? I mean, this is an area of our interest yeah. as well. So I think you, that's an extremely important and salient topic, especially now. So rare cancers defined in the United States is six per 100,000 per year. In, in con conglomerate, that's 22% of new cancer diagnosis. So almost a quarter of new cancer diagnosis are quote unquote rare. So they're not so rare to begin with. Yeah. I think sarcoma, you know, as you know, is, is quite, you know, fill a huge chunk of that, that 22%. Um, so, you know, how do you get drugs to those patients and how do you get approvals for, for drugs in, in rare cancers? And I think what we're seeing is these kind of novel designs, these basket studies where they're looking for a molecular marker and it's more of a tissue agnostic biomarker driven study. I think that's one, and we've seen the success that you mentioned. There are now nine FDA approvals in the United States that are tissue agnostic. And I think, um, you know, the other part is looking at kind of these platform type studies where you look for a biomarker and there may be, a, it may work in a tissue specific, biomarker specific, or biomarker specific tissue agnostic kind of setting. And I think those are the, the classical designs that are institutional run. I think the other part is decentralized trials. So a few years past, um, there was a trial that, that closed that was looking at um, electinib, for example, in elk positive fusion tumors, which is a super responsive to elk inhibition. Um, and it was a completely home run trial. I think partnering with industry partners, so that trial was, was through um, Roche and Foundation Medicine. I think that, that's a way to get access to patients with rare cancers. One, Foundation had the, the sequencing of all these patients so they could identify which patients have ALK fusions throughout the country. I think the other part is Roche has the electinib to, to get the patients the, the medications. So I think, you know, in a, a, I, I, we don't have this issue in the United States as much with public versus private access, but I think, you know, having partners in the industry who are willing to want to get their drugs in trial, are motivated to get their drugs in trial, and with a huge population like Brazil, I think you know having industry partners is a is a really a way to you know accelerate the growth of both you know patients in Brazil who need these treatments as well as the drug companies who have interest to show their drugs are effective in these different rare diseases. Well, for sure, for sure. And uh, Vanessa, a last question for you, and then I'll just have ask for a quick comment for for Dr. Adeshek, but. Uh, you know, what's the difference to evaluate these new technologies in Brazil rather than the first word in the, you know, uh, high income countries and specifically for our cancers. I mean, we see that uh, as Dr. Adeshek comments, uh, there's 22 percent of new cancer cases are rare cancers. Right. And they're not really uh, assessed in national care plans in Latin America. So we don't have a specific way in which the government looks for patients with rare cancers to incorporate new technologies. So how to balance this, you know, access to new technologies and cost in, in the Brazilian system, for instance? Yeah, we, we have a big discussion in Brazil around rare diseases. And it's interesting because usually rare cancers are not included in the discussion of rare diseases. So it's kind of a spot where we don't discuss it a lot because we don't discuss it when we talk about oncology as a whole and don't, we don't discuss when we talk about rare diseases. Uh, so we really have to raise awareness on that. And, and I think one important thing is that we have data about those diseases. Because when we talk about reimbursement, 
one of the big questions is what's the budget impact? How many people are, be, are going to be eligible for the treatment? And usually we don't have information about that in Brazil. So uh, just going back to clinical trials, I think one important thing about including Brazil as uh, a center to recruit patients is that we have a very heterogeneous population and we can test those drugs and we can run those trials in a more uh, comprehensive population, let's say. And the second thing is that if we have data to show what's the percentage, what's the number of expected patients that are eligible, it helps definition and driving discussions about reimbursement. So, so I really think that we, we must invest in having those trials and also in having data to support that discussion. For sure. Epidemiological data for rare yes. diseases is really an unmatched medical need in Latin America. So now just for a last question sure. uh, for you, can you briefly comment? I mean, I can see your badge, you're a cancer survivor. So what, what's, what unique perspective you, know, you have as now a medical oncologist and being uh, a cancer survivor? You know, I, uh, it's funny, I, I don't often talk about this publicly, but um, I think what I've seen with patients with cancer and, and being taking care of them is that everybody wants to try. Everybody wants hope. Everybody wants um, to be able to, you know, someone to believe in them and uh, to go through this journey together. And I think, you know, why I want to become a clinical trialist and why I'm, I am a clinical trialist is because, you know, getting patients new drugs and new therapies to improve their outcomes and improve survival. And, you know, those are the, the hard things that we look at here at ASCO and things like that. But what, what that really translates to is, you know, overall survival is more time with their loved ones. It's more time at home. It's more time. And, and I think, you know, that's a kind of a, I got, what, what we don't talk about is what that really translates to is, is survival means time with, with the people that are important to you and doing the things that are important to you. And I think, you know, getting new drugs to patients with cancer is, uh, is the way to, the, to, do, to do that. So, All right. Well, thank you, Dr. Yeah, Adeshek. My pleasure. Thank you, Vanessa. Thank you so and much. That's it. I hope you guys uh, also watch our other videos uh, covering the most important data here at ASCO Annual Meeting 2024. Thank you. Mm -hmm.